Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a great video for you today. The video is me analyzing some Breaking Bad jail murder or hit scenes. I don't know if they died actually. And I'm gonna give you an analyst. One of them brought back a lot of memories actually. Anyway guys, uh, please check me on YouTube member programs, Patreon member programs. Check us out on Discord. Please check us out on our new podcast, The Real Deal with Larry Law. And every Monday and Friday we have new episodes of Stone Great. Check my merch out. Check the book, Gangster Redemption. Great, great read. Everybody's loving it. And I do sign the books. Just make sure you email me. All right, guys. This is season five, episode eight of Breaking Bad and the prison killing scenes or the prison stabbing scenes. Some of them are pretty horrific, but I think they're pretty worth uh, talking about because some of them I don't think they'd be dead or or not if they were hits and why I think it would have been done differently in a real prison setting. But they got some of them pretty close to right. Let's start with the first one. Okay, that first scene. The guy's on the telephone uh, and in jails, and that's a county jail. You can tell by the orange they're wearing. That's the difference. So that's a county jail. So you can tell what's going on in that video, in that, that scene where they all get him and he comes from behind. First of all, talk about a rookie mistake. You know, if you're up on the phone and your back is to everybody, that's not a good move. Turn around. You can lean against the wall, your foot on the back of the wall, look at what's going on around you. Obviously, some people want to be real quiet and talk to their old lady or stuff. Usually, those people don't know what's going on in prison. Uh, also, those prisons are managed by different gangs. Or like you'll have a, a, a black phone, a Hispanic phone, a white phone, a general phone. Just like they have that in TV rooms. So they do have that differently in this. In this, and obviously, they get a bunch of people. One guy grabs them by the head and they start stabbing them, stabbing them. What I do like about it, I witnessed many stabbings, and they happen like that. Pop, 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 They're called pokers. Um, that's what we call them in prison. You know, they're getting pokers. And, and they're, you know, it's a sharp object, whether it's a fence post, whether it's a, a shank, whether it's a nail into wood. It could be that long. And, and you're poking them. Now, usually, people don't die if you're getting them in the stomach, even the chest, the arms, shoulders, back, lower abdomen, you usually have to go out to the outside hospital on a stabbing like that. But you don't have to use your diet because it's not long enough to go all the way into the heart. How they do kill you is some of the other scenes. But I didn't see that one in this one. Uh, obviously, he can go down. I watched the guy get stabbed 30 times when I was in prison. 30 times. Now, he died, too. So depending on how long the blades are and how you know brutal the killing is gonna be is what happens. So let's check out the next one. Now that one, did you see the way they cut the door off? You'll see things like that. Obviously a guy will be coming out of a TV room and the door will shut. Or the guy will be, usually that happens, the guy gets asked into a room, hey, let me talk to you for a minute. Uh, I was in one uh, situation where I watched them, literally, I was on the tier, and they brought one guy over, you know, and, they, and I'm watching this. There's two guys on the tier above them, and they got a buffer machine, a buffer machine. This one guy calls another guy over, and I know because I, was, I got the paperwork on the guy, and he was no good. He was a child molester and a rat. And he, they pull him over and they guided him right to this spot. He had no idea what's going on. These two guys dropped a buffer machine on his head. It crushed, I remember that vividly. And the guy just went down like a crumbled. Didn't die, but uh, he got fucked up real bad. I remember, see, when that happened, the first thing I always did was go get ice. I'd get ice and maybe batteries from the store man. There are people who have a store in their own cell. So I'd say, man, hey, give me two backs of batteries. Give me some honey buns, two packs of batteries. I go get ice for my cell. My cell and I knew what to do. And we're running right away to get out. So we know there's going to be a lockdown. We want to find out. They want to find out if it's a major killing, like a, a gang retaliation or something like that. Once they find out it's something like that, okay, we're not on lockdown very long. But you never know. So that in this killing, you see the way they shut the door? 
so the guy couldn't get out. Obviously, he's screaming. Now, the one thing on these, they're not showing it. These things would be under camera review. You know, I'm not seeing these things done in blind spots. Nobody wants to catch another murder rap, unless they're all murderers to begin with, and they don't give a fuck, I've seen that. But this doesn't seem like that. There's guys in county jails, and obviously, depending on what your charge is, you might not be on that felony pod. When I went to back to a county jail, even after I got out, uh, when I was in the halfway house, and when I threatened the halfway house director, I went back to, federal, uh, to prison, they put me in Seminole County Jail. But they put me in the felony pod where all the violent criminals were and stuff, because that was my record. Now, if you're a, a check forger, and, you know, a little bullshit charge, or a traffic tickets, or, you know, excess of traffic tickets, and you got a warrant, then I'm putting you up in the felony pod. They know that's, that, that's the violent place. That's the murderers. That's the, the rapists. That's the fucking violent people. So normally they're not going to put you up there. Now, in this case, you see them get behind the closed door and from a hallway. Most hallways have cameras. So they're gonna know who did what. Obviously in Atlanta where we were, we had a lot of what they call blind spots. So once you had a blind spot, we call them killing zones. In this case, these guys in a hallway in a county jail, pretty much guaranteed that's under camera. They're not showing that, not, not saying they should, but that's the things I think of. Don't Killing when they got him in the back of the neck, that's a murder. That's killing a guy right in the spine and in into the brain. In the back of the brain here, there's a soft spot up here in the neck. You can actually go right up into the brain. Uh, and, and obviously, that that happen, can happen in two seconds. You can happen. That's where a poker will kill you. It's probably usually a longer poker, and it gets right into the brain and it kills him. And, and it, you're done. That's it. And uh, they dropped him on the floor. Obviously, that can happen anywhere. I got stabbed. I stabbed the guy going upstairs in front of a lot of people. I didn't care. No camera. Didn't care. Uh, he didn't die, thank God, because if there was an investigation and everything, I probably wouldn't be here. Uh, obviously, in this case, this guy's out in the middle of somewhere. You can do that pretty, you know, when nobody can see you do that. That can happen totally. Now, the second one is the black guy where they get him and they put him down. Now, they're poking him like that, but I'm not seeing any deadly pokes. I'm not seeing in the heart of the chest. I'm not seeing dead in the heart. I'm just seeing in the chest, shoulders area. You're going to get someone hurt, but you're not going to get them killed that way. Now, the one last blow they did to him in the neck, they got him in the side of the neck. Yes, there's a carter or an artery there. Did they really get him in there? Did they get him? I, I've never seen a guy die that way. I've seen him poked. I've seen him get bad, you know, scars, blood. I guess you have to hit it perfect or whatever. Doesn't know if they did it. Obviously, they would be hitting the chest and all on the chest to try to get to the heart, uh, something of that nature. I've seen him get crazy. Uh, Whitey Bulger, I talked about on a video, they got his eyes. They, they went in his eyes. I mean, think of that. I'm just trying to think of that. Wow, that's fucking brutal. These killings happen mostly in federal or state penitentiaries. When I say penitentiaries, I mean high security facilities. Obviously anything can happen in any prison. I don't care if it's a low, but usually in the, either the high, I was in, in, in high security Mac penitentiaries or I was in mediums that were like gang units and stuff of that night, like Yazoo, they opened it up as a gang prison. Forest City, they put a lot of the gang members there. Uh, but, you know, that's where you see a lot of that. You don't see that much in county jail. They have killings. Go to Rikers Island and this. I think uh, someone said there were 79 killings this year in Rikers Island already. I mean, I don't know the exact number, but it's crazy. Uh, and that's why Rikers Island is, is, is such a bad place, and it always was. But you normally don't see that because they have a pod. And you don't leave that pod. You're not walking through the halls like that. Just going from dorm to dorm or wherever you're doing in this. And you know, go for chow. Chow comes to the to the unit, stuff like that. All right, let's get the next one. Okay, that one again, you seen in the mirror, the quick killing. Again, what made me think of those is the quickness of it happens, because exactly what happens. First of all, the person who's doing it, and I've done it, you are so hyped up. You don't do once and that's it and see what happens. It's bop, 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 bop. 
You're trying to get a guy. When I got street, I got him in the side and I'm trying to poke him. That's exactly what happens. Now you can get one and gun and people could stab you while you're in a yard and walk away in a big fight. Wouldn't even know you stabbed. I was stabbed in the back in the, in the thing. I didn't even know I was stabbed until later and I had blood there. Your adrenaline is pumped so much. And it wasn't a, a wound that I needed care or anything like that. I had to go outside hospital. You know pretty well your body and how it feels. At least I do and did. Uh, maybe I should have, but I didn't. And I'm not a hospital kind of guy. It's just me. Now, let's go to the next one. This one right here with this guy on the floor in the shower brought back a lot of memories. The reason that one brought back so many memories is I, I witnessed that exact thing happen. Uh, a person didn't know how the prison was run, uh, went to the shower with nothing. Uh, if you know anything about prisons, you will go to a shower with boots on, with your shank, and with a buddy. Now, you're not going in the shower with your buddy to, to fuck around with your buddy, obviously, depending on the prison. Usually the prisons we had were like its own cell like that. They'd have to open the door and come in and get you or open the uh, like a swinging door and get you. Now, the worst thing you want to do is be in that shower with nothing, bare feet, soaked up. You, you're done. They're coming in with boots and, and shanks and just get and plop. Well, I watched that happen and I watched the guy fall down and blood went down the tear. Remember it vividly. He walked, the, the blood was gone down the tear, he was killed. And he just didn't know the situation. I don't know who he pissed off. I don't know the whole particulars of the case. Why they killed him, what happened him. He was a newbie, he was a young guy in prison. Now normally if you feel any tension, anything in prison, and you're my buddy, I'd say, come on, I'm taking a shower, and you take one. Now I'm going in the shower, I'm going up there, you and I are bullshit, we're walking. I got my shit, I got my piece, my shank or whatever I have. And I go in the shower, I take my boots off, put them right there. Got my shank, everything there, and I shower. My buddy's out front of the door, and if he, if he sees somebody coming, sees a bunch of guys coming, he bangs on the door, and I'm getting my boots on quick, I got my shank. Cause he's right there ready too, and he's got his shank. They see it's gonna be a fight. Now I'm coming out, dick swinging, Boots on, but I got a weapon. You don't want to go in there and be sitting there with your dick in your hand and nothing to help and defend yourself. In fact, and they showed him fell down right in the shower and the blood. Brought back a lot of memories, that one. And uh, that's one of the reasons I saw this one. I said, wow, this is, that's real. And a lot of these tick me to being real. So, or could happen. Little bit with the cameras, might have been planned a little better, something of that nature. But totally can happen, so that, that, that got me on that one. That, that one was a rough one, to seeing the guy in the shower scene. Now that one is in a crowded room. They killed him in the neck or whatever they did. And you know, the ones you see like this, I mean obviously they're showing poker scenes. I call them poker scenes, and I don't mean cards. But you'd see a razor blade cut across the throat, literally from ear to ear. And I don't mean a little one, because if you make a razor comb, which I used to make, razor comb is you take a comb, you take the razor blade out of a razor, and it's a little razor blade. It's not like a straight razor with an end on it, it's a little razor. You heat the uh, tooth, uh, uh, the comb, a comb, you heat the tooth comb. First you take the razor and you go like this, and you're like kind of like uh, grinding out a spot or cutting out a spot in the plastic. Then you take the razor, turn it over, you put it in there, and you heat it. You push it together. I remember getting my fingers burnt. You push it together and oh, but you push it together and now that razor is secured in the melted plastic. Now you put the razor in your pocket, the jumpsuits all had pockets, and you're ready to slash, slash. Now they're not thick. You gotta remember that the blade is only up that much, so it's not too thick. Now, if you want to see them built better, you'll see a guy build one out where it's the whole razor is up that much. And then they'll take that on a piece of wood or whatever and cut the throat, literally. Now, the razor's getting through the head. They're just pushing in so much. They're cutting the whole fucking throat instantly dead, obviously. Uh, I've seen a throat get cut. So, but the cutters, you usually you do those to slash and they're like, 
they're there to do damage, but they're not to kill. When I cut a guy once across his chest, it went through his t-shirt and it wasn't really that deep or anything, but the blood comes right out and the shirt was all out. So it's not what you'd think uh, of like that. Now, cutting the neck or cutting the throat, yes. In this one on the guy on the, uh, the table bench, you see. Now, obviously, I'm going to say this to the guy's going to get caught. There can't be that many people around without snitches. Not only without snitches, even those rooms today have a camera in them. So there's no way they're not going to get who did that murder. Now you can get someone in a blind spot or we call them killing zone in Atlanta where there were no cameras and there'd be two guys around. You kill them near the gym where I hit a guy with a mop ring. There was near the bathroom. There was no camera there. Now out in the gym there was a camera, but not there. Not behind where the bathroom was. They didn't go in the bathroom with the camera. Let's continue. <laughs> Now, did you see that kill when they killed the guy in the room? Everybody started getting up. Now, everyone's getting up, and if they're smart, they're getting up to get ice, to get their food and stuff. Now, these guys were playing cards. Take your cards. You know, lose your fucking cards. The first thing I did was take the deck of cards. One, I want them in my cell, and, you know, for playing with my celly or whatever I'm going to do. Uh, and then get out of there. And you will get out of there. That happened many times. And that killing or the stabbing, killing, whatever it was, to me was more realistic because it's in a private room. Uh, we had TV rooms that had no camera in them. Now they had cameras in the unit so you could look and it had angles to see who comes in and out, but it's a TV room. You'll see people in it. I remember getting called into the lieutenant's office or the SIS and they're saying, Long, we seen you come out of that room. I said, I, I didn't see anything. I left when everyone started leaving. I thought the show was over, the movie was over. You know, they know you know, but then you know you're not going to say it and they can't prove it because they don't have a camera in there. And the exact time, they don't know. Oh, you came out fifth. They try to figure it out. They try to know. Sadly, there's enough people that are going to tell, and that's a big, big problem. Uh, but when it's not a killing, when it's just a beating or a good fight or something like that, they didn't even give a fuck. So it wasn't even that, you know. But if there was a killing or something, there's going to be an investigation every time. And I mean an outside charge can be coming. That happened quite often. On a killing. Stabbings, attempted murders, you never saw them really uh, uh, pull that. Look what they're doing to the guy in uh, Hazleton, who they killed Whitey Bulger. Three years the guy's in prison. In the hole, no less. Under investigation? Took his eyes out, cut his tongue, they had him on camera and everything. What's the investigation? That's just to cover up for their, their own fuck ups. But, so they know and they will do whatever they're gonna do. Now, in that one, again, why wouldn't you just kill him in the cell? You know, they killed him, got him out of the cell, killed him, put the thing in it. Yes, that will get him killed. Ending up around the head, face, neck, or heart is really, usually a stomach is, it could be a setup to get your ass out of the prison. Because once, once you usually get a puncture wound in the stomach, they usually have to send you outside to make sure you have no internal bleeding. Obviously, if they know, they might see the color, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, this one, they threw the guy over the tier as well. Again, you're in the common area. If they did that in the cell and fucking just stab them up really good, not know, It'd be a little bit more believable. These guys would definitely get caught. The murder rates would be crazy. And they are. I mean, there's more stabbings in prison than people even know. And it's sad right now because uh, they have no control over the system we're living in right now. And you don't see this in other countries. Our own prison system is broke. Fix that. That will start a whole culture of rehabilitation. We don't have that. And I think that's a big triple down, trickle down effect. I really do. Uh, and until we start fixing things internally, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to fix this other stuff. That one was brutal. Uh, 
I've never seen a guy burnt up in his cell like that. Uh, I've seen cells on fire. I, I was in the hole when a friend of mine, we used to have a lot of rats in Atlanta, in the hole in Atlanta. They have what they call, in the holdover, I was being transferred from one prison to another, and they put me in what they call the holdover unit, but the hole in the holdover unit. Because I was in what they call a black box. So black box is a thing that's on your arms, you're, you're a high profile or a, or a high escape risk or a high dangerous inmate, they put you in what they call the black box, and they hurt and it gouge into your skin, it's really bad. We're in the, the holdover hole, and we used to see rats, we had rats. I used to try to catch one as a, as a, as a uh, you know, a pet with a garbage pail with two pencils. This one dude used to be able to smoke, and he had matches and stuff. So this one dude was laying in his bed. I remember, because I asked him the whole situation, I'm telling you what happened, he ends up getting an infraction on this. He's laying in his bed, he opens his eyes, Laying in bed, opens his eyes, and there's a fucking rat right in front of his eyes. He hits the fucking rat, it goes into the garbage pail, he takes a match and throws it in there, and there was papers in there, and it goes on fire. This is a true story. The rat jumped out of the fucking garbage pail, ran out the cell, because we're all hearing him scream, ah, he hit the fucking rat. And we and get up to the door, and you're looking out, and we, I saw it with my own eyes. I saw a rat with its little tail on fire. I mean, like a little tail on fire. Go in the, into the pipe chase. It's called a pipe chase. So the rat came out of his cell and it went in another, like a little, little thing. And, and he screamed, motherfucker. Well, the cops come, the cops, guards, and his garbage pail's on fire. They end up giving him a shot, or it's called a shot in prison. It's an infraction. It's a, a, a write-up for putting his cell on fire. And they ended up getting more days in the hole and, and, and lost good time for that. Now, I know what happened. How do you like to explain that? Well, I just fucking tried to kill the rat that was, oh my God, we laughed our balls off about that. There were so many rats in Atlanta. It was such a fucking scum hole. Now, burning that guy, you saw that in a movie also, uh, The Longest Yard. You saw what they killed the guy in the cell uh, with fire. Uh, obviously, nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Uh, I, I, I don't know what you would do. Crazy. Yes, it's done. I love that show. I'll tell you what. It, you know, people used to say to me, I look like Walter White. You know, when I put my glass in my goatee, I look like Walter White. You know, with the bald head and all that. Walter White. Uh, I don't think so, but maybe I did. But I will say one thing, that guys, that that uh, those brought back memories because they were pretty realistic scenes. What a great show! If you haven't seen Breaking Bad, if you're too young or whatever, go back watch it wherever you can watch it. It's a great, great series. I'm so glad I live where I do. And please, guys, make good choices. Don't go to prison. There's nothing, nothing good about prison. And nothing. Mind you, I just said that. Nothing. Make good choices, everybody. Enjoy life. Be kind to one another. Please try to help somebody elderly. Do something, open a door, carry a package. It'll make you feel good and it'll sure make them feel good. Have a great day everybody. Stay safe, make good choices. See you next time.